So oh, that seems to have started okay. Oh, the maker's corner again. Um, previous video I went through a little bit of Arduino shield stuff. Um, and then it was a uh, an observation about the SPI um, communication bus and how the pins have changed when you go from the Arduino. Well, which is this one. And then you change to an Arduino Mega, which is kind of this kind of thing. And um, so now I've done that investigation on the experiment box. So we can actually have a look, quick look at that. Just find the page. Here we go. Oh, I need to do desktop. Uh, typical stuff. Let's see. Let's split again. Just a sec. Oh, there we go. <laughs> if somebody could explain me. I mean, I set up this stuff, you know, with the XSplit and all the inputs and everything. And I saved the profile. And sometimes when I come back, it's like, the, the, the you know, like, for example, the mapping to the desktop doesn't work, or the camera disappears, or and then I have to spend a lot of time fixing it. But, oh, well, uh, small stuff. Um, yeah, what was I going to say? Yeah, you can find this all over the internet, so this is just one website um, that has this information, but you can find it all over the place. But when, if you're going to, if you built a, um, basically, you have your own prototyping cord, something like this, and then you built your own circuit on it, and you use the SPI bus, then you need to understand that when you move from an Arduino Uno and you go to the Arduino Mega they've um, changed the default digital pins for um, the signaling items which is basically the data going out, data out, data in and the clock chips that actually you can take from any pin basically but the default has also been changed for that the, the default pin used for the first module chip select um, don't really understand technically why this has been done because this I think is mostly a um, software change you know so all uh, you know in the base system configuration they have specified that you know MOSI is on this pin and clocks on that pin and, and uh, MISO is on that pin I mean it could just technically speaking, they could have kept it where it is. So, like, it could have been on the same pins that you have an Arduino. Or, or we could have been good to have provided an option where you can say Arduino Uno style. Because then when you have, um... Yeah, you have shields that use the SPI bus, then, um... You don't have to uh, worry about this. And I think that... Ah, there, there must be... I'm still thinking there must be somewhere a software configuration where you can go and... Uh, change this to um, suit your needs but um, I haven't been bothered to look into it. Um, so what I did, um, let's see if I take this one here. So my simple solution was to um, see if I uh, have anything to point with. Come on, I have to use my finger. Um, so the SPI pins were over here. If I show here. Mm, what was like? Yeah, so approximately there. And um, now they moved to the basically they moved them up here to the end connector. That's the default design. So what I did is I just um, on my custom expansion card here, I from underneath I added this ribbon cable here to um, to pull over the signals to the correct location. 
I know it's a mess, but it actually works. So the diag the experiment set up, it says that it found the SD card module, and then when I run the experiment, it doesn't complain about not being able to write to it. And also, um, let's see, I can actually show more on here if we take this one. So here it reports when I start it up. Uh, it also reports the um, DHCP address. And then I can also um, yeah, ping the IP. Uh, so I activated the Ethernet, um, small Ethernet logic. Um, so basically everything is working up to the level that I was when, when I was using the Arduino Uno um, before I ran into memory limitations. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to see if I can send the um, measurement values through UDP or broadcast them all as a UDP packages on the Ethernet network. Um, and then I'll make a I'll make a follow up video on how that works. Uh, yeah, so it was. It's actually very if 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 you stick with um, you know, if you if you stick with this evolution path. Um, you know, it's quite easy to you know it's a it's a very easy migration process, and the availability of bo bo it's a, it's interesting the availability of Uno and and Mega is still very uh, it's everywhere. It's pretty much the only two boards that we can access that we can go and buy from our local electronics provider. There are lots of Arduino boards. There are lots of other boards. You know, um, but if one really wants to have a have a quick startup in the beginning, then it's quite easy to start from the. Then, of course, if you build a prototype based on these two cards, then you can easily either you, you can scale it up into Raspberry Pi. Maybe not so easy, because there are some limitations there. Then you need some extra shield support also, or you can scale it down to. Um, Smaller size, smaller size, but more powerful microcontroller. But um, this this is a pretty solid base to work, work with. Okay, but well, I'm happy. So that that um, yeah, it was just to, as I said, it was just to unplug. In my case, it was just to unplug the shield from the Uno and then plug it into the Mega, and then. Uh, Plug in the mega, and basically you you um, you know you can just show it easily here. You basically go into tools, and then you um, you it will automatically recognize it when you plug it in. So then it will show you, okay, what do you have here? And then you can basically go in here, and then you can say, okay, instead of using the Arduino. Um, genuine Uno, then you say Arduino Genuine and Mega or Mega, too. and and you can keep the code that you have. At least everything I've ever been working on, uh, you, there's no code modifications needed. It will just recognize that you've changed the board, and it will recompile it. And as you see, the one has a lot more um, memory space, uh, storage space, and memory space to use. So you know. In, the, in this case, I went from basically running out of memory to it using 19% of the dynamic memory. So that's quite good. So I, th I think I can expand the script um, or the sketch. I keep on using script. It's actually called sketch. I'll be able to expand the sketch to uh, uh, to cover um, what I intend to to do on this board. So. Yeah. I think uh, I think this is the last getting the UDB measurement transported to work will be the last thing I'll do on this setup. <laughs> okay, so that's it for tonight. See you all later. <laughs>